What's up anglers? Down in the shop today doing a little bit of work for the kayak and today we're going to take a couple of these milk crates and make our kayak crate. Let's stop talking, let's get to work. Alright, so this is just the classic milk crate on the back of the kayak project. So here's what you're going to need to get yourself started. First thing is a couple of milk crates. Uh, you do need two at least. Uh, you can get fancier if you have three, you can make an additional lid. You need two. Don't steal these from your local grocery store, please. Uh, do go out. You can usually find these at like garage sales, uh, estate sales. I found both of these uh, at a Habitat for Humanity Restore store. Um, so that's another great place to check out. I got these uh, for a buck. Uh, another thing you're going to want are some good old zip ties. These are probably a bit small, but they're what I have on hand. I'll just make more hinges. It's perfectly fine. And then for the top for myself, I'm going to want some sort of bungee. Now, I prefer a bungee cord than to a lot of small bungees like I have here. Uh, but right now, with all this corona stuff that's going on, uh, any type of elastic is pretty hard to find as it's being used for masks and such. So I'll stick with these for now, and in the future, I'll upgrade with some bungee cord. And tool wise, um, I'm going to be using a jigsaw to do some of my cutting today. You could also use a table saw and you could even use a hand saw. Just take a little bit longer to get that done. Now, how this is going to work is we're going to have a bottom crate that we're really not going to do a whole lot to. And that's going to be the gray crate for me. And the reason I chose this one as the bottom is it has some of these open slots, which will make making the hinges a lot easier. Then the second crate is going to go on top like so. But we're going to cut this crate. Well, even that says exterior cord. <laughs> we're going to cut this crate right at this mark here. And basically everything from here up is not going to be used. Uh, we'll hold on to that in case we have another project we need it for. Uh, but we're only going to need this bottom portion here. Um, we're going to put some zip ties through one side so that way this will act as a lid to open and close. Uh, and then we're going to run some bungees across the top here so that way we can throw some plastic baits, that kind of fun stuff, on top. Uh, and they not fall out when we open up the box. So let's go do things around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to work on this black crate. Set this gray crate out of the way. And let's get started on this. Again, this is going to be the top, and what we're going to want to do is on the crate, you can choose your depth, but I'm going to cut it right above this line here, so that way I've got a good, well, what, three inches, uh, which should be plenty of depth for what I need it for. Let's get to work. this aside and before I get started on the next step do a bit of cleanup a few moments later all right so next up we want to sand off all of these edges as you can see they're kind of rough I want to smooth it out a little bit so it's good to go um, I'm just using some 60 grit sandpaper um, that I'm going to run through here you can hand sand this you can use this if you have a uh, uh, mounted stand, sander, really whatever you want to work, use works just fine. Let's get to it. That's our end result. Now the goal here is really just to get any of the sharp bits off, make sure it's smooth, make sure you're not gonna get your line caught on anything. 
etc etc if you wanted to keep sanding this down to where those little bumps don't show it off that's completely your preference me and me this is a functional item it doesn't have to be perfectly pretty i'm okay with that so let me clean up this mess and then we'll move on to the next step later all right so now we've got this all cleaned up we've got this put on top so what you want to do is just kind of decide which side you want to put your hinge on. Um, I would look at this lip here, make sure it's of, you know, there's not any deformities like this side here. Has this kind of piece sticking up here, so I'm not going to use that. So I'll use this side here. And then we're going to make that hinge happen right here. Now, uh, if you took this lip off, you could just drill straight down and be a lot easier. I'm going to have to come at it slightly at an angle, which is perfectly fine. Uh, now I am a little bit obsessive about some symmetry and how things lay out so i'm going to measure this out but totally not necessary um, basically i'm going to put one on the center which these are 13 inches across so that's six and a half and then i'm going to put one well let's just put three more at uh, two three and four inches off of this side and i'll do the same on the other side uh, probably a bit overkill, but I have a lighter um, zip tie that I'm using. I'd rather use something a bit thicker. I mean, you see that? Uh, but this is the only one that I had at home today. And we're just kind of using what we got around the house. So, measure this other side. Let me turn that for just a second while I do that. Measure that two, three, and four. So now I've got visible marks where I want that hole to be. Now, I'm gonna shortcut this a bit and I'm gonna leave this on here and drill both at the same time. Now, because I'm doing that, I am gonna clamp this down. That way it doesn't move around on me because there is some movement still. And always best when you're doing stuff like this to clamp it down. Otherwise, something will move and you'll regret it later. The cloud of those clamps. I'm just going to clamp this down to the handle on one side. And same thing on the other side. These style clamps are my favorite for so many reasons. And this is one of them. Doesn't need to be overly tight. This needs to be on there enough to keep it from slipping around. So I've got my drill. My drill is already selected based on the size of my zip tie. I've got 11 64ths on here. Again, pay attention what size of the zip tie you're using. If you're using something bigger, you're gonna need to put a bigger hole in here. So we're just gonna line this up here and get to work. And there we go. my clamps away just set it to the side for now so all of our holes are made so now we just need to grab our zip ties now uh, now don't tighten these all the way up out of the gate um, I like to play with it a little bit I mean this is I haven't done this a lot but with hinges and stuff like that you zip them down all the way, it's not going to want to um, open and close. So we'll play with it a little bit. Now I will tell you, because these are really tight in here, if you bend the tip of your, your zip tie real quick, like so, it'll make it easier to kick that out. Okay. So I'm just going to put these all in here, pretty loose right now. And again, just part of my preference and I can make sure everything looks the same. So I will always come from the top to the bottom. And what I like about this is if something breaks, it's just a zip tie. Or if I want to change it later, I can do that as well. Alrighty, see that? I got those all in there, and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna tighten these down a little bit, 
and try to get them all to be about the same. And then I'm going to test the top and tighten again and repeat until it functions how I want it to. So right now, still pretty loose. It goes all the way. So let's go tighten these a little bit more. good right there. Not a lot of wiggle, still opens and closes just fine and I think that we'll add something to hold it open like so. And I think I can tweak a couple of these a bit more. The great part about these is if you get them too tight and something doesn't want to work out right, you just cut them off and try again. All right. So that is looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and snip these ends. I think we're going to need to add a little string or something to hold this. And all the way open. There we go. So for this catch, what we're going to do is we're going to put a small hole here, I'll put it right in here somewhere, and we're going to run a piece of paracord through that, and just knot it off so it doesn't come through, and then we'll add another one, either utilize one of these holes or we'll add a hole here, actually there's one right there that looks perfect, so we'll utilize one of the holes in the bottom here, and it's just about the right size, and do the same thing, run the paracord through, try a knot, and make sure we get that to where it lands exactly where we want it at. That'll hold it open. As it closes, it'll fall down inside. Now, just personal preference. I'm going to trim this a bit closer as well. And melt that off just so it's not sticking way out there. There we go. Looking good. All right, so up next we're going to move to the top. Add some bungees. All right. So we're going to start working on the top here. The hinge is on this side here. See, open, close, open, close. Uh, so we're going to start working on our bungees so we can hold our plastics or whatever we want in the top here. Now again, like I said earlier, uh, I prefer to use a bungee, bungee cord and just kind of wrap it all through here and then tie it all off. But with current shortages, those aren't really available, but I do have a number of the short bungee cords. So what I'm going to do is basically make holes in the bottom here so I can feed these guys through and hook them up and then add, well, until I think that we're good to go. I'm going to use kind of these notches as a bit of a guide so I can make sure I line everything up. They are matching. That's good to know. All right. Uh, and I am going to probably put more on the hinge side. Then on the other side, thinking of things slide down here as I open and close, this is where they're more likely to fall out. Good idea. A lot of different ways you can fix this. Um, again, you could just put it over the top, but I don't want it to slide around at all. Um, I guess the other idea is you could put notches uh, in here if you want to use this type of bungee. I'm going to do the holes underneath uh, because I want to replace these in the future and just put in uh, the actual bungee core that I can thread everywhere. So for now, I'll just put these through. Uh, once the hook goes through, I really don't need to worry about it going over the lip. It's just going to catch on the outside here. 
So it ends up kind of like that. Let me get that back on camera. Which again, temporary, works for now for me. I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and add some more holes. And get to work on this. Okay, of course I don't have a single color, so uh, I had to plan it out real quick. That's just how I am. There we go. So I'm just sliding these in and just kind of pushing them to rotate around. Again, it's not perfect, but it'll work for me for now. There we go. Now we've got some base bungees. Help keep everything in here. Add another one down here on the hinge side. Hopefully. There we go. There we go. And I'll leave this one here just so it makes it an easier spot to get in if I need to. Of course, I can get in anywhere with these bungees. I know they're not perfect, uh, but again, and once I get my bungee cord, I'm actually going to redo this. And I'll use these holes still, but I'll probably wrap it over the top. Um, that way, I have uh, it takes up less of the room. But that's what those look like on the end, which is kind of handy. They can be little hooks to hang things on if need be. So we got the bungee on the top all done. <clears throat> the last thing we need to do is just find a way to keep this closed. Now, you can do this a number of different ways. Uh, I know folks that just take a bungee, tie it up down here, and they'll lock it up to the top so it holds it that way. Uh, you can put a clip here if you want. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to connect a bungee across like this, and I'm gonna put a little knob up here uh, I've got one right here. Now, this is the one I 3D printed, but you could use pretty much any small knob. And I'm gonna put that knob right up about here. Let's get that closer. So that way I can just pull this up and lock it over the knob, and then that'll hold that closed, okay? So I just gotta make a few holes, a couple down here for the bungee hook, and then a one up here for the knob. And screw that all in together and we'll be ready to go. Let's get to it. So now I can take my bungee, run it through here on both sides. And that'll just hang tight whenever I need to open and close it. When I close it, I'm just gonna lift it up, slap it over that real quick, and we're good. So that's not going anywhere. Well, let's take a look at what this looks like with tackle in it. All right, so here's our finished product. Uh, again, just throwing this together with what I have around the house, a couple of milk crates and such, but here's what it looks like with the actual lures and such, and it's kind of my most common stuff. So got a bunch of my plastics up here. It's kind of a good catch-all. Extra bungees on this side. Again, I'm gonna upgrade this bungee in the future when I can get better elastic. So I've got this cord here, so that way I can keep this closed. Won't come up on its own. And I can just reach back, because you gotta remember me on the kayak, is gonna be behind me. I can just reach back pop that up and let it go and now I'm able to get inside the actual crate. Now when we open this up, we've got the catch here to keep it from falling all the way back and those bungees are holding all of our plastics just fine. 
So I can open and close that. I can reach back and grab what I need. Good old finesse shads from Z-Man. Done with it, just throw it back in here. Open and close, nothing's gonna fall out. Should be good to go. So inside of the crate, um, I've taken, I've got four, I think these are 3,600 size boxes. Uh, I always get it wrong. I tend to always get numbers wrong, so I may be wrong there. Uh, this is just a smaller box with some of my catfish and stuff. So you can see ample room. I'm used to only being able to carry this as my max, and I've got more. I could probably fit another two um, 3,600 boxes in here. Do have another three or four inches at the bottom to use, which I'll probably just use for backup supplies, um, that type of stuff, lunch, who knows, stuff that I can tuck underneath there. Close this back up, put the bungee back on the side, and we're ready to rock and roll. Well, that's all I got for you today, my friends. If you can, get outside, enjoy spring. It's absolutely beautiful outside. If you can't, do something to keep yourself busy. I know a lot of us are stuck at home, so find yourself a hobby. Mine all have to do with fishing, so obviously making some things for my kayak, or as you can see over here, this is my rod building supplies. Over there is my lure building supplies. My workshop is a mess right now. So I keep busy. So find something to keep yourself busy as well. We'll all get through this together, everybody. Stay safe, stay sane. If you can, get outside. Bonus, get a pole in the water. I know I'm doing that later today. But most of all, take care of yourselves, my friends. See ya.